Okay, hello, hello everyone. We are back with another video. I am Yato the Mad. Uh, today we just want to talk a little bit about the past week. We have had uh, Mythic Plus in Dragonflight, the first week of Mythic Plus. So far, um, from my experience, at least, this being the first one uh, that I did was Azul Vault. Um, I had a pretty strong showing as far as my damage and everything goes. Uh, I felt like it wasn't in too bad of a place. Um, the good thing about Mythic Plus, and at least the effects that we did have, things had a little bit more health, so we had a bit more chance to put some damage in. Um, <laughs> of course, you know, sometimes you end up with dungeons where you get rooted and whatever and have certain things interrupt, but unfortunately, as the affixes went on uh, and the keys advanced uh, to around, like, the point of 8 or 7, I believe that's when we see the third affix, which really is there to screw up spellcasters pretty hard. Uh, it will mess you up mid-rotation. You have to cut out whatever you're doing like it's a red light, green light kind of game. That was a big problem because that would be like I'd be in the middle of a mind seer and things like that and I'd have to stop unless I wanted a four second shadow lock. Um, it was very disruptive, I think, mainly for spellcasters. For melee or for hunters, they probably wouldn't have seen too much of this being a problem. So, if you were a spellcaster in a run with people that were doing, you know, either of those, then you'd probably have seen Shadow Priest not doing as well. Um, that is just the, you know, a fix for you. Like, we can't really do much about the factor of whether we cannot spellcast. It's our bread and butter. We spellcast. <laughs> so, that was my experience, at least. Um... Otherwise, I feel like I did a pretty solid performance uh, for the most part with dungeons. Um, you see a lot more things that you can help and assist with, um, like the vampiric embrace and things. Like if I was beside somebody, then I could help heal them just so that, you know, there's more chance that we push through something without a death where they would usually get targeted and wiped out by like something from range that would be a possibility of happening. Um, being able to throw certain things in, like uh, Divine Star every now and then. There's just little things, like you can kind of notice that you're um, pretty helpful for, or being able to mass dispel certain things. Like, these are just little abilities that I came to see very useful. Um, being able to interrupt, so... It's another thing to just make sure that you do have your ability to silence. Um, depending on your build, I did make some modifications from my original Terra Tendrils build, which was to make it so um, I had a bit more survivability, and we can talk about that a little bit later maybe um, in the video because I'll just bring up, like, my Shadow Priest's um, tree and everything for you guys and talk about that. Uh, but I think the next thing I want to talk about is the changes that will be coming very soon for Shadow Priest. So, here is what we are looking at. Now that Season 1 is underway, we're planning the following tuning adjustments to classes to take place during scheduled weekly maintenance on December 20th, which for me is today and will be a few hours away. So, we do see changes to Druid, Death Knight, Evoker, Hunter, Mage, uh, Fire and Frost, Monk, but then we see Shadow Priest, which some people have been asking me about whether or not this is going to change um, how we kind of talent. Uh, I don't think for the most part it's going to change your f talent trees. Like, um, it's going to give us an overall increase, but it's minimal as to whether or not this is going to change things. Shadow Word Pain uh, damage is increased. Vampiric Touch damage is increased. These are our dots. Um, so, and for some of these it mentions for Shadow only. Um, 
I'm guessing they're talking about our shadow form or the, you know, the fact that no other forms of the priest are getting this buff. So increase the mana cost of power word shield to 5% of base mana was 4%. That's 1% the difference. It's not really too big of a problem unless you are really like using up your mana pool. Uh, vampiric touch damage increased by 10%. Yeah, so those two. Shadow Apparition damage increased by 10%. So this is going to be a good one because if you're already running things that increase your Shadow Apparition's damage, you're going to see that this um, when you're pumping out all those spirits, it's going to make a difference. Uh, Devouring Plague damage increased by 10%. So single target builds will find this gives them a bit more of a benefit. Uh, void Bolt damage increased by 20%. So those who run Void Eruption will see that Void Bolt damage will have a bit more of an impact. Uh, Mind Blast damage increased by 20% for Shadow only. Um, it will help any build because Mind Blast is like one of our biggest fillers kind of thing. Like it's one of our priorities. Once we've dotted them up, we're pumping out Mind Blast. So it's not going to make builds stronger than each other sort of thing. It's just something that is our streamline. Uh, Mind Spike damage increased by 20%. So Mind Spike has pretty generally been a weak ability. Um, when it gets its 200% boost, it can help a little bit like with what it can do, but generally it's felt very lackluster so i think like this is just going to make it perform a little bit better once again this is going to be a single target build improver mind flay damage increased by 20 percent single build improver so single target is more going to see the benefit of this buff i think than um our multi-target that's the main thing I can see is like, so we're going to be a bit stronger in raid or boss battles versus um, our, yeah, AOE. Because Mind Blast is the main thing I can see that we will get a benefit from and our Shadowy Apparitions doing more damage. Um, dot ticking a little bit more, like that's going to increase a little bit more damage there. It's an overall increase. Idol of Yassage increases damage done by 5 when Mindbender is summoned on a feared target was 15%. So that's more for PvP, I think. So Because you're not often going to fear in a dungeon or whatever else. Um, a raid. You're not going to see that benefit. Um, so that's not really going to affect PvE too much. That's kind of how I look at things there. We do see some changes for Rogue. Um, Shaman getting another all ability reduce um, by 3%. Uh, Warlock and Warrior. And then some player versus player data. Uh, we can't see if there was any information for Priest for you guys. So yeah. Discipline mana regeneration now reduced by 5. Was 15% in PvP combat. Reduce the duration of Void Volley. Horrified at 2 seconds was 3 seconds. Reduce the damage of Void Volley by 30%. Reduce the absorption value of Power Word Shield by 20% in PvP combat for Shadow only. Reduce the healing transfer of Vampiric Embrace by 20%. Shadow Word Death Damage reduced by 20% in PvP combat for Shadow only. Developers note Shadow Priest self-sustain is too high in PvP, so we are making targeted adjustments to their healing additionally we are targeting void volley and idol of yassage as we've seen it could lead to frustrating situations with minimal counterplay when paired with other instant cast damaging uh, dealing abilities so yeah i think they're talking about the fact that yassage can make it so your attacks when somebody is feared don't break the fear so there's a lot of situations where if they have already used up their ability to um well, yeah, the PvP trinkets that make it so they lose control. It would make it so you can just beat the um, crap out of them while they can't really do anything about it. So that would be the complaints about that aspect. And then we're going to look at uh, this one as well. Season 1 is off to a roaring start, and we've been playing lots of dungeons, gotten lots of feet. Great feedback from players during the first week of mythic plus while we want to be careful not to change too much as players are still figuring out the new dungeons we've identified some areas where we'd like to act on feedback sooner than later following mythic plus dungeon tuning adjustments will go live with scheduled weekly maintenance this week tomorrow december 20 in this region 
Algathar Academy, aggravated skitter fly darting sting damage reduced by 25%. We should now and should now try to sting different targets. Result in an issue that caused Spectral Invoker Arcane Missiles to not scale properly with key levels. Overgrown ancient um, ancient branches health reduced by 40%. So they've made it so Algathar Academy, at least in that particular fight, like that area with the tree, is not as bad. Um it should be a little bit easier to deal with that. Um, Azua Vault, Conjured Lasher health reduced by 20%. Um, that's fair. Arcane Tenders infused ground damage reduced by 33. Azure Blade, overwhelming energy damage reduced by 25. Overwhelming energy cast time increased to 3 was 2. There is now a delay before Overwoman Energy inflicts damage and expels Ancient Orb Fragments, was instantly inflicts damage, uh, Ancient Orb damage reduced by 25%. So, yeah, they've made some of these a little bit easier. Of course, the broadcast for Overwoman Energy to not display resolved an issue that caused the cast some of Overwoman Energy to display incorrectly. Quarter Stars, Legion Hounds, Fell Blaze, Puddle now probably has a screen effect while standing within the Fell Puddle left on the ground. Okay. Uh, Halls of Valor, Ebon Claw Wargs, Leap for the Throat damage reduced by 20%. Uh, result an issue that caused Ebon Claw Wargs, Leap for the Throat to target the primary threat player. So that was meant to bounce around and hit other people. Uh, Fenrir, Claw Frenzy's cast time increased to one second while instant now has a visual in to indicate that the damage it inflicts is split by targets in the area. Okay, uh, Knockhard Offensive, Soul Harvester's Death vo Bolt Volley, cast time increased to three. Uh, Soul Harvester's Death Bolt Volley and Shadow Soul are now cast less frequently. That's pretty good because, like... It it's kind of crazy sometimes when you get to the necromancer part of the knockhard offensive, and there's just all sorts of stuff going on, and like you can barely stand still. Um, once again, this is one of those areas where it would be like, okay, well I got a spell cast, but I can only spell cast one ability. Move spell cast, move spell cast, move. Like, um, and then on top of that, you have to deal with the affix giving you the red light, green light, so. Some of it has been very disruptive the past week. Like, it's been crazy. Uh, Ukel, Corrupted, Death Bolt, Cast Time Increased to 2 seconds. Uh, Death Speaker's Chant of the Dead, Cast Time Increased to 8, and it's now cast less frequently. So, yeah, it's another case where Knockhard should be a little bit easier. Um, it won't be as crazy as it was. Rizomoria's Mortal Strike duration reduced to 4 seconds. What's 10? Um, Desecrated. Uh, and it's now cast less frequently. So, yeah, we're going to see a little bit more ease um, as far as all this goes. Because one thing I've also noticed over the past week is that we just do not have enough interrupts for everything that is casting. Like, you really have to prioritize interrupting, like, a particular ability. And that's where, like, you know, Scorchling no longer casts Burning Touch. Like, you'd have to try and um, interrupt so many different things going on all the time. <laughs> it's, like, crazy. Uh, but that is just how, you know, things go once they increase difficulty. Uh, Thunderhead and Flame Gullet are now visible from much further away, making their flight path easier to keep track of. Um, yeah, so this is talking about the two dragons, um, in Ruby Life Pools, which have been quite the pain, um, to deal with. The cast st time of Thunderhead Storm Breath and Flame Gullet's Flame Breath increased to three seconds, was two seconds, and that's a good thing for sure. Because I feel like, um... When Thunderhead turns and decides he's going to blast somebody, you really don't have time to move. Like, you are going to eat part of that blast because he's already casting it before he's begun to turn and face you. It's not like he turns and faces you and then begins to cast. He is already in the casting. Like, the bar is happening before he looks at you. And then, bang, you've been hit by it. 
Uh, Primalist Flame Dance is Flame Dance. Channel duration increased to 6 seconds was 4. Um, so that may just mean that it really needs to be interrupted because I think Flame Dance from their Flame Dance channel, I'm pretty sure that is their healing ability. So you'll have to keep on top of this. Uh, Blazebound Destroyer's Living Bomb Periodic Damage Reduced by 40%. That's going to be a, a nice thing for uh, healers and for groups. Tempest Channeler's Lightning Storm Periodic Damage and Duration have both been reduced by 20%. That's very kind because it has been rough getting past um, Tempest Channeler's. They are crazy. Uh, Kakaya Blaze Hoof, health reduced by 15%. Blaze Bound Firestorm, health reduced by 20%. So we're going to see some more ease in Ruby Life Force because it has been a r pretty rough one once you get into the Mythic Plus and the affixes. Kairaka and Urk Heart, Storm Vane, health reduced by 10 Reduced by 10 while Kairaka is grounded. Flame Spit will now target a maximum of three players, was five. Yeah. So that's another one that has been pretty rough because this ability here, um, targeting everyone, like, soaks the whole battleground area in fire that, you know, it's hard to avoid, it's hard to get out of. If your group spreads too much, then it's everywhere and it's very like, tough to survive the fight once um, it's everywhere. It's not so bad if the wind blows some of it away, but that all depends if it does. Temple of the Jade Serpent. Uh, depraved Miss Weaver's Defiling Mist Damage reduced by 20%. Depraved Miss Weaver's Touch of Ruins. Initial Aura is now a curse effect. Uh, Wise Mari. Uh, improved the visibility on Corrupted Gazes. Uh, warning effects. Resolved an issue that could prevent Wise Mari's facing to display properly uh, during Wash Away, Shire of Doubt, Touch of Nothingness damage reduced by 20%, uh, Bounds of Reality reduces damage taken by 99% instead of granting immunity to all damage. Okay, so yeah. Instead of making it so it doesn't take any damage during this thing, it's just, yeah, it takes minimal. Touch of nothingness. Okay. But yeah, that gives us a breakdown of what's going to be happening after maintenance. So we're going to see improvements for Shadow Priest across the board. Like, um, we're going to see a few more um, dungeons just being a little bit easier to do. So... It so, will be as I said, we're going to have a look at the build changes. So, one of the things I decided to do was just make it so dispersion was a little bit more useful. Uh, I've gone with intangibility because it can heal you a bit more. So, in situations where it's like, oh shit, like I'm taking a lot of damage or something, uh, this gives you more of a saving grace out of this ability, which I find is possibly just a little bit more useful than having a little bit more, like, damage absorption. Because it seems like this shield gets chonked pretty quick, because, um... 23,000 isn't a lot in the current scheme of things to lose. Like, it does not take long before your health is already, like, dropping below that. Whereas the gain of, you know an additional 25% of healing is a decent thing to um, keeping you alive in some situations that get a little bit out of hand. When things get hairy, uh, this will give you a little bit more survivability. Uh, I've ended up changing a little bit of routing because of the fact um, of how things have been. I took out Harnessing Shadows and Dark Evangelism at the moment, uh, just so that I could have Maddening Touch up to 60%, so I've got a little bit more Insanity build. Um, it just helps with the factor of making sure uh, I can get my Insanity back up and more frequently be able to do something with it than um, these two abilities at the moment. Because while it's nice to have that little bit more on Coalescing Shadows, um, it's 
probably going to be a little bit more useful, at least it has been for me, to be able to um, channel my mind seers and things like that so that I can make Screams of the Void and things work a bit better. I can get a bit more out of Idol of Cthulhu possibility, you know, from mind seers. Um, so this build, I alternated just a little bit more to make it so that I've got more chance to mind seer. Unfortunately, once again, as I stated with the affix that has been this week, uh, I can be in the middle of a mind seer and have to step back and stop mind searing because I will shadow lock myself for four seconds if I don't. Um, I decided to move away from Yogg because the 25 apparitions is very unpredictable as to when he's actually going to be about. And a lot of the time I kind of find he's just running around with me doing nothing because like by the time he's turned up, it's no longer um, of any use to me that he has. Um, or he turns up at the end of a fight. Like, it's too much of an unpredictable element. He's not really useful on hand, as opposed to, say, Idol of Yassage, where, at the moment, he the Idol of Yassage has the enraged um, sort of benefit because targets are getting enraged, so it devours the enraged effect, increasing your haste by 5%. So you'll see a little bit more benefit out of this um, in affixes like we've had this past week. Uh, a little something else that I was doing at least at one point uh, for single target damage was to go this route. So you can take a point out of Mind Devourer just so that you have Mind Flay and Sanity. And with that, you will just about pull like some pretty respectable numbers. We can just go and show you guys on the dummies. Um, Okay, so this is what we've got. Changing it so that we've got a little bit more single target ability while also keeping our AoE. Um, yeah, let's begin a rotation for you guys. So then we just let loose a little bit. In the scheme of things, this build is not too far behind our um, other one. So 2.67 mil. But the benefit of that is that we then have all of this as far as the damage that we can do to multi-target. When it comes down to it, we have a lot more. So as you guys can see, at the two minute mark, we have hit nine mil still. Um, with this build, which is a really solid performance. Um, we haven't lost too much, and we still, like, we have a single target ability here. Uh, we have the ability to gain a fair bit of insanity. This one is still one of the solid ones, so I will make sure that I copy that to the clipboard for you guys. So, once again, thank you all for watching, thank you all for hanging out. Like and subscribe to support the channel. It helps a lot. We are up to 400 subscribers. It's making a big difference. Thank you guys. It's been great. See y'all in the next one.